So, dear friends, colleagues, I think we are about ready to start next session, music and poverty reduction. Welcome for the, this, this session. And uh, those of who, who participated for the previous uh, session over the music and development, I think there is a nice bridge from the previous session to this uh, session, which is just about to be start. Uh, what I think one of the things which really strikes me personally on the previous session was the small detail, uh, detail, detailed information. It was about the Cuba. They have been calculated that if you invest money, let me say one dollar, for uh, music industries, for instance, a uh, business who uh, is producing uh, CDs or DVDs or, or concerts or whatsoever. One dollar invested will come back to the investor during the 10 years period 600 times. This is a remarkable thing and I think this only is kind of the good starting point for the, the session we are just about to start. So, can music education and engagement in musical programs for children and youth be considered as an effective tool for poverty reduction. Some studies and our experience from program implementation shows that the music education and participation in musical activities are awakening young people's creative vocation, develop life skills and enhance career opportunities. If you expose to music, are more likely, likely to have a job. It direct, directly contributes to the economic development of the community. It engages children and youth in creative activities, lowering the risk of the exposure, exposure to drug abuse, crime and violence. It gives better academic, social and citizenships performance by young people. And it promotes social development and community co cohesion developing positive attitude towards people and society brings forth benefit to the overall community development. There are many open questions. For instance, how do investments in the music industry on national and local level alike contribute in the creation of more jobs? How it increase the quality, quantity and the quality of the music offer, offerings to the audience and local community generate return of investments and thus contribute to overall socio-economic development of the country. At which levels investments are needed or where such investments could be most cost efficient? And finally, what evidence we have and what lessons are learned from our current and past investments? So, there are many questions and I hope the coming session will start to give answers for these open questions. Before I will invite the, the speakers of the session, I will just shortly tell you about the time frame of the session. So, as we have only two speakers who will give a presentation approximately 10 to 15 minutes, it means that we have a lot of time for the discussion. And, uh, as we have a lunch after this session, so you can feel free, feel free to take time for your questions and uh, I hope we will have a dialogue, a lot of dialogue and, and a good conversation during the end of this session. But now, dear friends, it's time to ask first speaker. Dina Hopson uh, is experienced Ghana artist in mainstreaming music in the Ghana poverty reduction strategy. Please, welcome. The floor is yours. Hello. Thank you. Um, I'm going to share on music and uh, poverty reduction. So I'm going to share some experience of Ghanaian artists in mainstreaming music into the Ghana Poverty Reduction Strategy 
and then some lessons learned. Our indigenous music is also always used in social gatherings. So during Dr. Osadifu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's time, the music profession thrived. There were musicians like Dr. Ifrim Amun, Emeritus Professor J. H. Nketia, and others who were great music educationists. There were cultural decks in the Ghanaian embassies, hence bands like the Sibisa Band, the Ramblers, Kim Bruce, they taught. Some even had scholarships abroad. The Ghana Broadcasting Corporation recorded a lot of musicians live and then recorded ones. The musicians at that time started gathering, but it was until 1975 before a musicians union was formed. In 1966 was the first school in Ghana, and that brought the downward trend of artists and musicians. Due to the coups, there were curfews, the closing down of nightclubs, you know, and then many musicians left the shores. So the church became like a breeding ground for musicians because nightlife died and uh, many popular musicians traveled. But it's wonderful that those who went to like Germany, for instance, still kept their music. So they, pro they produced high life music still, but it was like bigger high life. Those who went to the UK, US, it was kind of funky. We have hip life and some went to Nigeria, some went to Cote d'Ivoire. So it's like though in, back home in Ghana, the music life was not very active, but then those who traveled would also record and still bring something. So I'm going to share some of our situation in the early 90s. There was a union, but by the early 90s, there was no bargain. The union had no bargaining power, and then music was not seen as part of the workforce. Um, there was no social protection. So musicians who work without contracts, no pension schemes, no health insurance, and, the music profession, though respected, people respect great musicians, but the profession itself was not taken serious. And then there was no proper development plan for the music industry by the, by, by the government. Music ed education in Ghana also had problems. There were some schools that would start the primary level, but in the secondary level, there was no music being taught. Some do not have music at all. Some was just singing, so it was not like straight. But on the, um, there was the National Academy of Music that was training music teachers. But the teaching of music was really a bit boring. So many children were not that interested in music. But there was copyright support from the government. Under the PNDC law at the early 90s, the, the Copyright Owner Society of Ghana was formed. That was a collective management organization that worked on intellectual property rights for music rights owners, book rights owners, and all um, intellectual property rights owners. By the year 2000, musicians had started talking because issues of piracy, IC issues was of concern. So in 2004, we heard that there was going to be a review of the poverty reduction strategy by the National Development Planning Commission. And when we looked at the policies, we realized that that the music component was totally left out. I mean, culture was out of the industries. So we were not happy, and we felt something should happen. There should be a change. So yes, we the musicians took the lead, and we realized that we can't do it alone. So we partnered, and we organized the forum. Now, we did not put ourselves like us and them, but we got ourselves together. So civil society got together, like the Musicians Union, Institute of Music and Development, and other musical groups, we got together. We also got our sector ministries, like the Ministry of Chieftaincy and Culture, National Commission on Culture, um, the Ministry of Tourism, and all the other ministries that has aspects of music, we got them together. And then we also got our developmental partners, like the World Bank, uh, German Embassy, French Embassy, Danish Embassy, you know, we got them also included. We, we, we wrote to the cultural desk, to send reps for this forum. We also got other industry stakeholders like the film producers and the actors because we realized that, of course, music cuts across in all these issues. So we got them all together, we had the forum, and then we put up a uh, 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 an action plan. And we had great results. Indeed, government did put some money 
in our industry, to enhance our industry. And then the music and film component was included in the GPRS. Now GPRS is Ghana's Poverty Reduction Strategy. So initially it started with GPRS, then after four years it turned to GPRS2, but now what we have is GSGDA, that is Ghana's Shared Growth and Development Agenda. So right now it is no more poverty alleviation, but Ghana's Shared Group Development Agenda. So we were able to get government to put it, to the, the NDPC to add it to the poverty reduction strategy. And that resulted in development partners being able to channel funding through our government agencies. Because most of these partners, they will not just give money to groups. It will go through government um, agencies. So when it was included in the policy, we had funding coming from development um, um, uh, partners. And then the Musicians Union was also restructured because we had a lot of um, impact from some of these fundings that came. Um, we got affiliated with the Ghana TUC and then we worked also with the International Federation of Musicians. The first big breakthrough we had was from the EU. The EU released 2 million euros and through the National Commission on Culture created what we call the Cultural Initiative Support Program for Artists, which spanned for over five years. This grant was for individuals and organizations who use arts in their work, or artists and arts organizations to carry out their work. So I was there one day, I had a call. Hello, Auntie Diana, I hear they are sharing some, music, uh, some money for musicians. How can I get some? I said, yes, really, it's true. So <laughs> individuals could get like from 1,300, um, 2,000 to 12,000 Ghana CDs. That's about 1,300 US dollars to about 7,700. And those were grants. And organizations should get as much as from 7,000 to 50,000. That's about from, yeah, 7,000 US dollars to about 32,000 US dollars. Organizations should get such grants. And you can imagine, more than 6,600 people applied. And so out of all these 1,600 with only 2 million euros, well, the Bible says many are called but few are chosen. So out of the 1,000, just a few got the grant. Those who didn't get it were so disappointed that the following year when there was the next call, not many of them applied. And the few who applied got it. So the third one, more people rushed, you know, but it brought some kind of... Um, um, joy and in interest that you could assess some funding. Unlike, you know, when people are um, traders and stuff like that, they could easily walk to any bank and get grants. But for music, it was not there. So when these fundings came in, we were very, very happy. Now, the French government also helped us a lot. The French um, increased their budget for Ghana, and from that time, um, 200,000 euros is spent annually on music, film, and the visual arts. I benefited rightly from this, some of these projects. Um, two years ago, a trip was organized for myself and other people in the copyright office to go to France to study their collective management organizations so we can streamline ours. And um, it, it really was a boost to our industry because at that time, our collective management organization was in transition. Then we also had the German embassy funding through the Guthi Institute their budget increased to about 147,000 euros a year. And two major concerts were organized. You know, the Ghanaian musicians who went to Germany had the burger high life, and they would record and bring it to Ghana. So two major concerts were staged in Ghana, and it was very great. And then there was also a documentary film still on music, on the burger um, high life music, which was shown in the Munich Festival in June. So these are things that then, then the musicians are very happy that their work is being um, appreciated. Also, I mentioned earlier that the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation recorded a lot of music. By the 2000s, most of these recordings were lying, being, getting rotten. I mean, they were being destroyed because the, 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 it was recorded on vinyl. And, and, and so the system has changed to CD and there was no funding to like preserve that. So the, the German embassy, again, there was there's a school in Germany who funded the digitization of all those um, records and tapes. There was also a, another library, Bapmaf Library, a collection from one Professor John Collins that was also archived. 
the disabled were not left out. There was a specific project where disabled Ghanaian musicians and disabled musicians in Germany came together and they created a dance piece. It was shown in Ghana and then they toured Germany. The Royal Danish Embassy, that's the, Den the, the Denmark also really supported, all because we had music and film components on our poverty reduction strategy. The Danish Center for Culture and Development released 130,000 euros to the Institute of Music and Development to create a music network in Africa. They also organized training programs for musicians and music professionals in management. I happened to be part participant in this training program. In fact, I had been a musician for many years and I have not had time to like do other studies, but through this program, I learned how to write proposals, projects. We learned about teamwork and others. So four years ago, when there was vacancy for the Musicians Union president, I had been second vice president and first vice president. When the vacancy was there for the presidency, Though a woman, I jumped up to it. So I became the first woman and the youngest woman to be the president of the Musicians Union of Ghana. And I was confident to do that because I had been trained to know how to write projects. And because I've been involved in the project, I knew if I could write good proposals, I could get funding to run the union. And our success story for our union is a clear picture. The Danish Embassy, uh, the DCCD also um, sponsored a rehearsing facility and a recording studio. I realized that many musicians wanted to perform, but then because they don't own their own instruments, their performances are not that tight. So we proposed um, a, record, a rehearsing studio and they provided it. So we have a rehearsing studio now. And after a year, when they came to see it, it was successful. So then they, they brought in more funds for us to build a studio to add to it. So now we have a rehearsing studio and um, a recording studio. They also, um, we had an auditorium that was not well functioning. They gave us equipment, lighting system to make it a public performance stage. And then also I realized that there were a lot of musicians, popular musicians, because the background of education in terms of music is not solid. Most popular musicians are illiterate musicians when it comes to actually the rudiments of music. They just work with their talent. So we set up a training facility where older musicians can teach the younger ones. And so like musicians who cannot go back to the classroom can come to that school to train. And uh, we linked up with the um, University of Ghana so that we can have some exchange programs. The Danish Embassy also released 5.6 million Ghana cities to IMD, that's the Institute of Music and Development, to set up the Ghana Cultural Fund over a three year period. That also was so successful that after the three years, they brought in another more money for another three years. Many musicians sent proposals and they got access to funding and did different kinds of programs. Now, much of the impact of these fundings brought a kind of a business approach to many musicians because there are requirements for all grants. And so the musicians, some have not even registered their band I mean, they don't have any registration for their groups and stuff like that. But because of the grants, they had to like give a registration certificates, recommendation letters. They have to have a bank account. So musicians now, many who didn't have bank accounts, open bank accounts. Those who were not registering with the musicians, you know, rushed to come and register because they need letters of recommendation. So it put some kind of development in the life of artists. Now, the Ministry of Trade. Normally it's like, oh, it's only trade. They don't think about our industry. But with, with our inclusion in the poverty reduction strategy, the Ministry of Trade has now invested in our industry. And they just employed a research person to research into our industry to find out how much people it's employing, how much money it is generating, so that they can have more investment into our industry. And, Last, in August, we, we did our Musicians Union Congress. And for the first time, the Ministry of Trade sponsored a working dinner whereby they sent their reps to come and teach musicians how they can assess fund like a small scale industry. They can assess funding. But for this, this was never heard. I mean, it would even happen. They would not even say that the Ministry of Trade is part of music. They would say it's only for culture. But because we had ourselves in the government policy, we had them supporting. And on the 
from in, in terms of the Musicians Union, we developed a four-year plan where education, uh, job creation, national and international protocol, uh, meeting with policymakers to streamline um, pro projects and policies that will be beneficial to the industry was all done. Like I told you, our affiliation with the Ghana TUC gave us a lot of training opportunities. And then the International Federation of Musicians and the LOTCO, we sent a proposal to them to train union executives to know how to run a union so that we can serve musicians professionally. And they did come. They taught us about contracts, how to use contracts and stuff like that. And it had a very, very great impact on the musicians in Ghana. We also had various training programs and one thing I do, especially with the Spanish embassy, is that um, normally when a musician is coming from Spain to Ghana, apart from whatever it would do, he or she would do, then I will organize the professional musicians so that we can have a day workshop. So for instance, a drama, a percussionist came down, then I'll organize all percussionists, then he will have a day with the percussion. So he will teach them and they will also teach him. We had groups like Fran Molina, He's a, a jazz musician with the um, guitar. I organized something for guitarists. And then we had the Goliaths. It's a choral group last year, December, and we did those exchange programs. And it's, the musicians were very happy because they could also link up with international musicians. Another project we also did was training in the schools. We realized that most of the school children interest in indigenous Ghanaian music was down because it is not really taught in the classrooms. So we sought um, funding from the Ministry of Trade. We sent the proposal to the Ministry of Trade, and they funded us. We bought indigenous musical instruments and took it to the school and had an extra curriculum activity time where the children played it. And it was remarkable. The teachers uh, testified at the end of the program that there were some students who did not do well in class during academics, but they were the forefront of the music and the drumming and dancing. And I forced that project because when I was growing up, at a point, I lost interest in school. The challenge was just so much. But fortunately, that same week, music and drumming was introduced. And that was what caught my attention. So I'll go to school because I know at break time we'll be dancing and singing. And so I felt that project was good. And so when the teachers testified that there were few students who were not good academically, but were doing good in the music, I was very happy. And the school have adapted it. So we are hoping that this would multiply in all the schools. The union has now worked on its bargaining certificates. They are yet to gazette and give it. And then also, in terms of gender, I felt women in the arts, especially musicians, most of the time there, there's little violence and stuff like that, but it's quiet because as a star, some of these things, you can't talk about it. So I sent a proposal to UNESCO about empowering women in the creative industries, and they funded, they sponsored it. So we had a workshop, a one-day workshop, where we, we trained women in creative industry. We had a lot of musicians, though, yes, because it was the musicians who started, but we also invited the film actors. And, and then the book writers, a few of the creative people to join in, and then they were taught about how to work against violence and stuff like that. Then we had an award ceremony in February this year for women in the creative industry. Of course, there were a lot of musicians than the other arts, and that was a big of a booster to the women, because these are women who had been singing all their life. Some years they have done great things, but then because they don't form they don't fall in the mainstream awards, you know, the um, commercial ones, they are not recognized. So it gave them a great impact. And I know a particular musician, a woman who had been distributing music for years, and she, was, she wanted to close down her shop when she was awarded. She said, no, she's opening, she's going to produce more people. So these are some of the programs we did. We also set up a musical fund, a mutual fund for musicians. We have registered, set, and put a seed money. We need to do more work to put in more money. We have also been involved in the management of um, the Collective Management Administration, CMO. And at the moment, like I said, it's in transition whereby we are having only a collective management ownership organization for music rights owners. Um, what we have was for music, book, and everybody together. But now we are setting up a new one solely for music rights owners. The Norwegian government also did not leave us out. They sponsored a metadata digital library. I realized that with the new um, CDs and downloading on internet, 
In Ghana, you can walk to a place and you'll find computers packed and they'll check, oh, if you want this music, I'll download it on your phone or on your CD without permission. And so how can we curb that piracy? I realized that, one, we first need the digital library to code all those songs. So then, since our collective management organization is now starting, we need to start with such a library. And the Norwegian um, Copyright Association, NORCODE, came in to sponsor a metadata library. And as I'm talking to you now, we've started loading. We've loaded over 3,500 songs and still loading. A lot of TV reality shows also happen, all because of this um, including music and film component in our poverty reduction strategy. We had programs like Bands Alive, Mentor. These are reality shows where older musicians will mentor young ones and then they will show it on the TV. It's kind of a competition. And um, there was another project, New Music Ghana. Um, it's a competition whereby the winners are taken to the Music Crossroads Festival in Southern Africa. So everybody wants to go to Southern Africa to perform. Everybody wants to have a good band. So the competition is done and then you see musicians from all these regions. We pick the best and they represent us. Since we started, we've had two groups going. And when they come back, they, it's like they have also been somewhere. <laughs> the first group that won now has two other bands, the same band, but they now have three sets of groups all performing. And I'm happy this happened. In conclusion, I want to say that the inclusion of the music and film component in our Ghana shared growth development agenda has really helped improve the life of artists. This is what we have. This is government policy 2010 to 2013. And there's a whole page for musicians, the music industry, whereby specific projects that should be done with the specific government partners that should partner are all in. And that, I believe, is a great thing. Finally, I want to show a small clip of one of the competitions that um, we did in Ghana for the New Music Ghana. The semi-final edition was contested for by eight music groups from three regions in the southern part of the country, the namely Hall, the, the Greater Accra, Volta and Central regions. Three groups each represented the Greater Accra and the Volta regions, whilst two groups stood for the Central region. Eight groups sang three songs. The judges looked out for vocal delivery and quality, which carried 25% of the total mark. Presentation, 20%. Creativity, 25%. Appearance, 10%. And diction, 20%. Wind Africa from the Greater Accra region won the hearts of the judges with their showmanship and delivery and won the competition. They were followed closely by Guda Music, also from the Greater Accra region, who also thrilled the crowd with their wonderful display. The third and final spot was grabbed by Kekeli Band from the Gvota region. It is time that Ghanaians, the government himself, will put money into our culture. America is America today because their culture, culture traveled. They got support and, and sent their culture abroad. This is a very vibrant industry, and we want to call on government to put money into our culture. If we have enough fund, we can have the competition in every region. African show boys, who were fantastic on the day, failed to qualify when they defied the rules of the competition by using more than eight people as the rule states. Three groups from the northern sector of the country will join the three from the southern sector for the finals at the Alliance Francaise later in the year. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Diana. I have to say for you that I'm, I'm really impressed. I mean, the work you have been doing is it's, it's remarkable, and I couldn't imagine better start for this session than because I was I was listening the I was thinking about the questions, possible questions for the audience. I started to make notes in my papers, and I suddenly found out that I'm running out of ink and paper. <laughs> so so many things came on mind, and I think I would like to share it with you because I really hope we will have a time for discussion. So just to pick up a few things, and you can think during the next speaker about possible uh, questions for the uh, speakers. I just pick up, like, uh, what is the role of the musician abroad? Uh, we talk about musician rights, 
We talk about status of musician in the community. We talk about music industries building up studios, for instance. We talk about music education, the role of music in school. We talk about musical rights, copyrights. We talk about civil society and co co governmental cooperation with it. We talk about maybe cultural tourism. We talk about if we have a funding for and a cooperation, what are the outcomes and and how to make sustainability after this. We talk about new te uh, technology, digitalization, new target groups with handicapped, uh, women's position, and uh, deliver musical products and uh, concert halls, festivals, evaluation. It was a huge package of what you provided for us. So these things in your back of, of on your head to think about discussion. Many things to discuss. But uh, let's move on, and uh, I'm happy to invite next speaker. I hope I can pronounce your name properly because I'm not French speaking, speaking person. I I'm happy to invite Serve Uc Ondaye. Merci Timo, merci Diana également pour sa présentation. Je suis Monsieur Gervais Ugonde, je viens du, du Congo et je vais échanger avec vous sur une expérience que nous sommes en train de mener chez nous depuis un bon bout de temps avec le soutien de l'Organisation internationale de la francophonie. Il s'agit donc euh, du, de, du projet sur l'identification du champ des industries culturelles au congo brazzaville Et c'est un projet que nous avons voulu pour notre pays, partant du, con, du constat simple. Le congo brazzaville c'est... Un pays de 342 000 km, situé en Afrique centrale, et on y retrouve un grand nombre d'ethnies, et qui déclinent chacune une ou des cultures, mais qui sont véhiculées également par une ou plusieurs musiques. Et c'est pour, pour dire que c'est un pays par excellence de la diversité musicale. Donc on y retrouve un grand nombre d'artistes, un grand nombre de, de groupes, euh, en partant de la musique traditionnelle qui est notre musique de base, jusqu'à la musique moderne, en passant par la musique traditionnelle moderne, y compris la musique d'initiation et bien d'autres. Alors, pour aller dans le vif du sujet, je vais séquencer le cadre global en lui-même en parlant un peu de la musique mais également de, de, du projet en lui-même ICIC, le projet que nous avons ouvert, ouvert et puis euh, un peu l'implication du Conseil congolais de la musique euh, dans l'organisation du secteur musical dans notre pays. Alors parce qu'elle exprime l'âme et la créativité d'un peuple, la musique est un vecteur d'identité, un facteur de cohésion sociale, en ce qui permet de rassembler les hommes 
et les femmes dans une communication fusion, en renforçant les liens entre les membres d'une société. La musique contribue à la paix, qui est une condition nécessaire au développement. Mais la musique fait aussi connaître au monde un pays et son peuple, comme on peut le constater pour la Jamaïque avec son reggae, pour Cuba et le Brésil avec la salsa, pour l'Afrique du Sud avec le Kwaito ou le Mboulé. Il en est de même pour le Congo, mon pays, avec la rumba congolaise. Considéré sous l'angle social et celui de l'emploi et des revenus, le devenir artistique, social et économique de la musique constitue un enjeu pour le développement de nos États. Et comme le sport, la musique est un facteur d'amélioration des conditions de vie des peuples et notamment des créateurs. En effet, comme nous, nous le constatons un peu partout ailleurs, les festivals de musique donnent vie au territoire où ils sont organisés, que ce soit des villes ou des régions, ils permettent à des villes et à leur économie locale de tirer profit des retombées, des manifestations et qui créent donc de la richesse. De ce point de vue, la lutte pour la réduction de la pauvreté implique que les autorités publiques, nationales ou locales, prennent des mesures pour mettre en valeur la richesse du patrimoine et de la créativité de leur peuple en matière de musique. Cela implique qu'elles soutiennent le développement d'activités génératrices de revenus et d'emploi dans les villes et les régions, en construisant des infrastructures nécessaires pour la formation, la création et la diffusion, en veillant à la formation artistique des musiciens, mais aussi à celle des entrepreneurs de la musique et en contribuant au développement des réseaux de diffusion. En somme, pour que la musique contribue au développement, il lui faut donner un environnement culturel, matériel, technique et économique favorable. C'est donc ce que le Conseil congolais de la musique s'attelle à faire en se fondant sur le chantier d'identification du champ des industries culturelles et notamment de la musique intitulé ICIC, un projet initié et porté par l'Organisation internationale de la francophonie et qui est techniquement mis en œuvre par l'Association Culture et Développement en France, basée à Grenoble, en partenariat donc avec le Conseil congolais de la musique, pour ce qui concerne notre filière, donc la musique. Il s'agit donc concrètement de procéder à l'identification des différents acteurs de la chaîne musicale, de connaître leur activité et leur production, et de tenter de cerner un peu mieux le potentiel économique de cette filière, les atouts, mais aussi les obstacles au développement de la musique et de son économie. L'objectif principal de cette initiative est de disposer d'informations pour convaincre les autorités politiques de l'importance économique et sociale de la musique afin qu'elle prenne les mesures nécessaires à son épanouissement. Donc, il nous fallait produire les statistiques et ce travail a donné euh, au bout de trois mois les résultats suivants. Nous avons pu dénombrer donc 14 maisons de production et qui emploient une centaine de personnes et qui génère un chiffre d'affaires annuel de 250 à 300 millions de francs CFA. Nous avons identifié 12 studios d'enregistrement qui emploient entre 30 et 40 personnes 
et qui dégage annuellement un chiffre d'affaires environ de 130 millions de francs CFA. Nous avons identifié six structures de distribution qui emploient dans l'ordre de 25 personnes et qui dégagent annuellement un chiffre d'affaires de 75 millions de francs CFA. 11 magasins de vente de détail employant 20 à 30 personnes et générant un chiffre d'affaires annuel de 40 millions environ de francs CFA. Il existe chez nous une organisation professionnelle deux organisations de formation, une salle de répétition, huit producteurs et tourneurs, sept salles de spectacle, neuf festivals, dont le Festival panafricain de musique, qui est l'un des plus grands en Afrique, et le Festival international Feu de Broisa, qui est déjà sa cinquième édition. La République du Congo, mon pays, compte environ 250 orchestres modernes et traduits modernes. Et la musique traditionnelle faisant partie de notre vécu quotidien, chaque village dispose d'un ou de plusieurs groupes traditionnels, au point où nous en dénombrons des milliers sur tout l'étendue du territoire. C'est pour dire que le potentiel musical est considérable en République du Congo. Mais plusieurs handicaps freinent encore le développement de cette filière. Nous pouvons citer l'absence de formation, le manque d'infrastructures, le manque de statut des artistes, l'importance de la piraterie. Alors, il s'agit pour nous donc euh, de mettre en place un environnement culturel, technique et économique favorable. Par la formation, la mise en valeur des musiciens et du patrimoine musical, créer des prix, des distinctions sur les trésors nationaux vivants afin de promouvoir le patrimoine musical développer les infrastructures de création et de diffusion, soutenir le développement de l'industrie de la musique. Mais à condition qu'il nous faut établir un dialogue avec les autorités nationales et même municipales, comme la ville de Brazzaville, qui est la capitale politique, et qui ambitionne de devenir la ville créative de l'UNESCO, dont le processus est déjà mis en marche. Il nous faut regrouper et organiser les professionnels de la musique au sein du Conseil congolais de la musique, qui doit les fédérer et devenir une plateforme d'appui aux professionnels et de concertation avec les autorités pour leur indiquer les mesures à prendre. J'ai été heureux donc de, de suivre le développement de Blasco tout à l'heure parce que nous en avons besoin. Le potentiel que nous avons, quel qu'il soit, et nous ne pouvons pas le, le développer et l'inscrire dans la création de la richesse au profit et de notre pays et des créateurs eux-mêmes, tant que nous ne sommes pas encore capables d'organiser le secteur musical en lui-même. Généralement, on, on, on apprécie la musique euh, dans certains pays d'Afrique et de chez nous par l'artiste. On oublie qu'au-delà de l'artiste, il y a tout un éventail de métiers autour de l'artiste. Et nous devons donc... Euh, apporter des statistiques, convaincre les gouvernements que le secteur musical, dans, dans toute sa grandeur hein, de l'artiste, dans, dans, dans toute la chaîne de valeur de la création euh, à, la, à, la, à, la, à la diffusion ou à la distribution, en passant par la production, 
et, et, et toute cette chaîne de valeur est un élément moteur qui peut contribuer au développement de nos États. Il nous faut donc éduquer, il faut le dire, culturellement, les autorités politiques de nos États. Vous, vous, vous allez comprendre que la situation est assez, euh, on peut dire, paradoxale, vous contrastez entre l'Afrique anglophone, parce que nous parlons en termes des Afriques, l'Afrique anglophone, l'Afrique francophone, et même les sous-régions, l'Afrique de l'Ouest, l'Afrique australe, et l'Afrique euh, du centre, l'Afrique centrale, ainsi de suite. Et c'est cette situation qui est la nôtre aujourd'hui. Et en plaidant pour le Congo, et en vous présentant la situation du Congo, euh, j'aimerais dire même qu'elle peut être étendue à l'Afrique, euh, plutôt à l'Afrique centrale, hein, à l'Afrique francophone, hein, euh, il faut se dire. Il n'y a pas encore véritablement un développement des politiques sectorielles orientées vers la musique. N'est-ce pas On apprécie la musique dans une politique globale de la culture comme telle. Et en ce moment, le tableau devient difficile à apprécier parce que la musique elle-même est reléguée aux simples fins de, de, de décoration ou bien de, de simples de euh, contemplation, de curiosité exotique, mais pas en, en tant que vecteur euh, de, de développement dans, dans, dans nos pays ou dans notre pays, le Congo. Et donc, le projet, le programme développé par le CIM aujourd'hui, donc euh, le programme de développement du secteur musical avec le soutien de la Banque mondiale que venait de présenter Blasco tout à l'heure, nous intéresse au plus haut point. Et j'ose croire que le Conseil international de la musique apportera son expertise à nos pays pour qu'ensemble nous puissions faire de l'économie musicale et une économie au service du développement de notre pays ou de nos pays respectifs. Je vous remercie pour votre aimable attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Uk. It was uh, very informative and highly interesting uh, speech, uh, which pointed out also the challenges. We heard that there's a lack of training, there's a lack of infrastructure, lack of uh, there's no uh, uh, real status of the musician, and there's a problem called piracy. So many things and challenges to face. Uh, I don't. I know, uh, you know, Uk, there's something we, I, I can tell you. We, we share basically the same problem uh, when it comes to educating our politicians in a cultural way. Uh, we have, we do have some countries in the world who really have uh, understood that culture and music can be a powerful tool to construct the societies. But unfortunately, many of the countries uh, are far behind of these advanced countries. Just to mention a few, you already saw in uh, Diana's presentation a few names. There was a DCCD from Denmark, and there's a Norway, Sweden. These countries are wonderful countries. They have really understood the meaning of culture, and they are investing in it. And there's a continuity in these projects. Unfortunately, uh, I come from Finland, and I have to say that uh, we have a lot of good film, but no tradition. And what we are doing is just to give one example: is that we are exactly like you said. We try to educate and communicate with politicians, so we share our problems totally. So thank you for the both uh, presentations. Uh, it was uh, highly interesting, and now we have a nice half an hour time for the discussion. And. Uh, I was thinking that what is the best for you? Do you want to sit and stand up if there's a question, or would you like to come on your chair? Maybe it's better if you take a seat. So, now it's time for the questions. Please, first question for the panelists. 
Please, uh, there's a microphone coming. And we do need microphones, not because of the hearing, but uh, taking care the translators can get the voice as well. Uh, this is a question for, for Donna. Um, what, what role has the type of funding um, that you described in your presentation played in allowing Ghana artists to travel overseas and promote Ghana culture? And is that, um, or, or how is that, or is that a priority for the Ghana government in the context of development and sustainability? Hello. Actually, I will not say it's a government priority, but these are projects that the artists, like the union, some of the, for instance, the competition, for instance, that was done, the winner gets to travel. And of course, then that means they go with the music, they get the exposure. And um, for instance, the exchange program for the disabled, um, it was a proposal written, you know. So um, for musicians, when you, touring is part of what we like to do. And we are looking forward to a time that government himself, that's where we are now. We're telling them that it's important that the, the embassies get their cultural desks again, so that, for instance, every embassy should be able to, at a point, have a day where their artists can travel over and go so that they exhibit their music, meet with the musicians in that, that cultural diversity to be promoted. So we now are enforcing it on governments and the Ministry of Chieftaincy and Culture to make sure that these are necessary things that uh, music festivals internationally, the government should support. It shouldn't only be from funding from outside. Now we are telling them it's a shame to only allow um, funding from outside to do something that is culture, that, that, that gives us, I mean, shows who we are. It's the duty of government to do it. So we are advocating for that. And once it's in the policy, it means government should do it. And since it's part of the policy for 2010, 2013, that's in Ghana, it's part of government's agenda. So we have to push it. Other than that, government may even release the fund to a ministry. But if we, the musicians and the civil society, are not there to give them ready opportunities to use the funding, then, then the fund goes somewhere else. So it, though it is in government policy, we have to ensure that it becomes a priority. Yeah. So thank you. And next question, please. Merci. Euh, C'est Gougoui Prosper du Bénin, président du Conseil Béninois de la Musique. Ma question va euh, euh, à, vers Diana. Alors, dans son exposé, elle disait que euh, la plupart des artistes gagnés étaient des, euh, des, analpha des analphabètes. En français, elle pas là. <rire> okay, disait que la plupart des artistes étaient des analphabètes et que l'éducation musicale que eux, ils prenaient, ils avaient assez ça euh, sur, au niveau des enfants. Est-ce que c'est les enfants euh, qui sont seulement euh, lettrés ou analphabètes Oh, et, et si c'est seulement les lettrés, pourquoi vouloir exclure cette classe qui, euh, sachant que la musique traditionnelle, c'est la plupart des gens vraiment analphabètes qui le font, pourquoi ne pas initier euh, l'éducation musicale en langue locale pour que ça puisse, euh, puisque le, euh, parmi les cinq droits fondamentaux de, de, que Sim est en train de promouvoir, c'est l'éducation pour tous, sans exclusion, que ce soit un alphabète pauvre, jeune ou adulte, tout le monde soit intégré. Alors, si c'était pas, euh, je vous donne des explications par rapport à ça. Merci. Good, thank you very much. That's a very, very good question. Um, some years back, through this organization, Professor Nketiah and other um, people in the field, especially in at, at, I don't want to say a wrong country, but I have the book which um, was done through UNESCO to show how to teach music in the African um, um, uh, communities. And it's a book that shows music teachers how to present the, the material, teaching of children, very interesting. So it uses, there will be excursions, they would bring in 
uh, in local people who are not literate but have the talent to teach the children as well in the classroom. And that is what is missing in our schools. Now there's free education in Ghana for children in the basic level. So practically every child is supposed to go to school. And so when music is taught interestingly, as it should, I believe children who have the musical talent will have the basics before they grow. Now, like you rightly said, I said most musicians were illiterate because it's only the, the talent that makes them stars. But when it comes to the rudiments, because the education system is not straight, yes. So many who have been to school didn't. And there are some who didn't go to school. There are a lot of adult education programs. But teaching music the way um, the professor, the, that book has been made will be able to help a lot of musicians to have good impact. So for instance, the training program we have at the Musicians Union is for musicians popular musicians who don't know the rudiments of music to learn. And then there's also elderly musicians who we think are, are growing, who would come and then impart into younger musicians who are like the youth, but they don't have most of these experiences. For instance, when it comes to playing of our guitar, we have a lot of musicians, popular musicians, who play the young ponsan, the odonso and stuff where there are a lot of uh, musicians today who have just learned from rock, from, from books. So you bring these two people together and then they can learn from each other. So a lot of workshops for the adults and those already on the field and for the children, teaching it in an interesting way that would involve culture. For instance, we have a lot of festivals in Ghana where music is used. But in teaching music in the, in the schools, it's only a little history and then the, the, the crotchets and the minims and it's not interesting for the children. So if they are taught in the, in the context of the community, and that means bringing out indigenous people who are not literate, but they have the tradition, the oral tradition, they sing, the, the, the indigenous music, come those who play the instruments, show them the techniques about it from the primary level they will grow and, and, and then have interest in the industry. I don't know if I corrected rightly. If I've answer, have I answered your question? Mm -hmm. Somehow. A little bit. A little bit. Well, it's, it's a forum, so. Moi, mon souhait, c'est c'est bien de d'axer l'éducation euh, sur les enfants, mais euh, il faut maintenant former les formateurs en langue pour que euh, enfin cet aspect-là soit euh, vraiment euh, pris en compte pour que l'objectif soit atteint. Parce que yeah, that is that is very true, and that is why I mentioned the book. Um, written from this, it's from the I IMC that the funding came from UNESCO for that book to be written. And what the advocacy we're doing there is finding out if music teachers are using those books. Because they, the teachers, if they don't make use of that material, I mean, the investment into those books and the time and resource will be useless. And I believe in not reinventing wheels. Um, what has been begun, it's good always to find out how you can best make use of it. So there are materials, especially in Africa, for music teachers, the trainers, to, to use. And so it's a matter of making those resources available to the music teachers and making sure, ensuring that they use it. Thank you. Uh, next question, please, Ahmad Sarmast. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate you on all those achievements that you had within such a short period of time. But uh, uh, noting that most of the project that you implemented, it was uh, possible thanks to the generous support of various embassies and organizations that you received. Uh, can you tell me what your policy, your strategy for sustainability of this project when the foreign funding is uh, uh, not available anymore. Thank you so very much. With the Cultural Initiative Support Program, <laughs> with the 
Cultural Initiative Safari Program, for instance, it was the project was written by the National um, Commission on Culture, and I happened to be a steering committee member. By the at the end of it, we proposed it to the government to own it and continue because from that project, we got to also have a, a record of different groups in the various countries. We got to know a lot of musicians in the hinterlands and what they were doing because the money went far and near. And we are still convincing the government to take it up. But most of the people who had the funding, it has changed their lives, obviously. For instance, the xylophone producer who had money to produce and train more people was able to train 25 people how to do the xylophone. So whether more funding comes or not, those people have been impacted, and they are also going to train others. They are also going to make money out of it. The rehearsal facility, for instance, that was built. They gave the money for it to be built. Now we are running it. Musicians pay a token to come and re re rehearse and record, and we've employed two engineers. And every day, musicians come to record. And so what we are taking is to maintain it and keep it running. With the education program, for instance, they gave money for us to refurbish a building and get um, class chairs, tables, and stuff like that. So it's there. We are providing the music teachers and getting the musicians to continue. So most of the projects that were, was approved were not things that need money always to get it done, but they were projects that would generate a bit of income or impact experience and knowledge that can be sustained, yeah. So uh, I would like to thank uh, Ahmad Sarmas for the question because that was also my list, one of the questions. And I think it's so important question that I actually, uh, would it be possible, uh, Uk, that you also give an answer for this question? Mm. Or your opinion? Oui, effectivement, mais la question du financement, c'est une question assez euh, importante. Et euh, la culture en général, la musique fait partie de la souveraineté euh, d'un État. On ne peut pas attendre euh, le financement d'un domaine de souveraineté de l'extérieur. Ça, ce n'est que, que logique. Mais le, le problème, comme je l'ai dit euh, dans, dans ma communication, c'est celui de l'éducation. Il faut éduquer euh, les autorités, nos autorités, à, à comprendre un peu euh, le potentiel, c'est-à-dire à comprendre un peu que ce secteur, le secteur musical, euh, particulièrement ou culturel généralement, peut et contribuer euh, au développement de, de, de nos États. C'est pas l'argent qui nous manque. Il faut qu'on soit, on soit, euh, on, on doit se le dire. Nous avons l'argent, mais l'argent est orienté pour d'autres secteurs et la, la culture est presque le dernier euh, domaine de la chaîne. Il va falloir euh, renverser certainement la pyramide. Mais dans le cadre qui est le nôtre, le champ il est, il est très vaste parce que on s'arrête pas seulement à l'identification des industries culturelles. Mais le Conseil congolais de la musique, depuis, un dernier, de, depuis euh, deux années également, est en train d'organiser de, de, des séminaires de renforcement des capacités des acteurs euh, du secteur euh, musical. Parce qu'il il va falloir que ces acteurs également deviennent des professionnels, n'est-ce pas et, et pour attirer les banques, les banques locales vers... Euh, le secteur de la culture, le secteur de la musique, il faudra que le secteur soit également professionnalisé, n'est-ce pas Et nous sommes en train de, de, de réaliser euh, cet objectif et, et, et c'est au regret encore, il faut me le dire, que euh, l'OIF, encore une fois de plus, est, a constaté également que les banques ne veulent pas encore prendre le risque dans nos pays, dans le domaine de la culture. Et l'OIF a mis en place, au niveau de l'Afrique centrale, au niveau de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, un fonds, l'Afrique de l'Ouest est déjà opérationnel, mais l'Afrique centrale, ça va commencer en 2012, un fonds de garantie hein, euh, euh, à l'action culturelle qui sera déposé euh, au niveau de la Banque centrale de la sous-région et pour permettre 
cette fois-ci aux opérateurs musicaux ou culturels en général d'avoir accès euh, au financement des banques. Je crois que timidement, on est en train de, de vouloir un peu quand même euh, euh, organiser le secteur. On est en train euh, doucement, doucement de, de, de mettre en, en place des fondamentaux euh, qui permettront d'atteindre l'objectif. Mais je, je, je me répète que nous avons besoin, je, je, je l'ai dit ici que Blasco, le CIM a développé un grand programme et nous avons besoin également, euh, euh, nos pays, d'être appuyés, hein, d'être, même en termes d'expertise, aider les, les États à formuler des politiques sectorielles, n'est-ce pas, dans le domaine de la musique. Thank you very much for the... Uh, answer and now we have two hands up. I think first here and then, then other side. Um, je suis Luc Yachoke, président du Conseil Camerounais de la musique. Je voudrais d'abord apporter une précision à ce que uh, Hugues a dit. Il parle de l'OIF. Il y a beaucoup d'anglophones ici qui savent pas ce que c'est. C'est l'Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. Parce qu'il faut qu'ils le sachent. Nous, on est francophones, on sait, mais il y a beaucoup de pays anglophones qui ne savent pas ce que c'est. Euh, D'autre part, euh, ma question s'adresse justement, c'est un complément, parce que justement la question qui a été posée, moi j'étais prête à la poser également. Mais j'avais deux, deux volets à cette question. Le deuxième volet, c'est... Moi, je voulais savoir euh, comment... Que ce soit euh, les deux intervenants, je voudrais savoir quelle est, quelle est votre approche euh, vis-à-vis, quel est votre degré de rapport et de relation avec les mairies. Parce que nous savons très bien que beaucoup de ministères euh, de la culture chez nous, surtout en Afrique centrale, sont un peu différents sur la question de la culture. Mais euh, nous savons également que les mairies ont un rôle de proximité. Et nous devons profiter de cela, n'est-ce pas, pour travailler avec eux sur des questions de la musique pour le peuple. Alors, je voudrais savoir quel est votre degré de rapport avec les mairies de vos pays. Merci. Ok. Oui. Je, je... Monsieur Luc pose la question à, à un conseiller du maire de la ville de Brazzaville que je suis. Et, et, et effectivement, euh, le... La musique est de plus en plus devenue euh, une musique urbaine, n'est-ce pas et, et, Elle règle autant de conflits euh, dans les villes. Elle est un instrument de dialogue entre les différents peuples qui habitent euh, euh, les villes. Et il va falloir que les mairies également euh, s'y impliquent, et, euh, s'y impliquent totalement. Mais pour le, le, cas, le, le cas présent, le cas de la mairie de Brazzaville, dont je suis euh, le conseiller... Euh, euh, aux affaires culturelles du maire de la ville euh, la situation de la, le, culturelle de la ville de Brazzaville euh, n'est pas à, à exclure de la situation culturelle euh, du pays en général et, le, chez nous lorsqu'on dit la superstructure, lorsqu'elle ne marche pas il y, a, il y a des implications un peu partout c'est pour dire que Brazzaville qui a 120, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 ans d'existence aujourd'hui et, et Brazzaville jusque là n'avait pas eu encore euh, une politique culturelle euh, globale euh, pour ne pas dire une politique euh, sectorielle de la musique et c'est ce que nous sommes en train de, de, de mettre en place euh, euh, présentement avec euh, euh, culture et développement euh, 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 France et également avec l'UNESCO euh, qui, euh, qui à travers le programme de vie créative n'est-ce pas euh, a choisi comme euh, le secteur euh, à développer dans la ville de Brazzaville, euh, le secteur musical. Donc, euh, sur ce point, euh, nous sommes en train de nous organiser de sorte que les, les villes jouent euh, leur euh, rôle de vecteur de, de, de culture, de vecteur euh, euh, de, 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 la, de la musique. Et il va falloir que ça s'inscrive dans une synergie d'ensemble, pas seulement au plan local. Brazzaville lui-même ne représenterait rien. Et si le même travail n'est pas fait à Yaoundé, n'est pas fait à Douala, n'est pas fait à Libreville, n'est pas fait pour que on peut arriver, toi et moi nous échangeons déjà sur cette question, de, de la création des marchés musicaux sous-régionaux. 
de sorte que euh, les infrastructures qui seront développées dans les différents pays pourront certainement permettre aux artistes de, de tourner dans la sous-région et, et, et au-delà. Surtout que la question de, de, des visas, nous en avons parlé hier avec l'absence de, de Kwanzambi hier, la question de visa et aujourd'hui freine hein, le... le le, euh, la circulation des artistes africains il est temps que nous puissions organiser un marché local un marché régional on peut dire un marché africain euh, de la musique qui permettrait en sorte que euh, euh, les artistes euh, circulent mais cela s'appuierait sur les villes d'abord c'est d'abord sur les villes et euh, Ouagadougou est suffisamment avancé là dessus parce que Ouagadougou a déjà développé le programme que Brazzaville commence de développer actuellement avec la création de, de Remdogo, qui est un centre de diffusion des arts de scène, mais qui, crée, qui a créé autant d'emplois et qui permet aujourd'hui aux artistes euh, ouagalais donc de, 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 de Burkina Faso de pouvoir euh, réaliser leur travail dans des conditions décentes. Donc la question de, 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 des mairies, oui, c'est une préoccupation, oui, et qui doit nous interpeller, nous tout, qui doit nous interpeller nous tous pour que nous l'inscrivons dans une... Euh, dans une dynamique globale hein, au plan euh, africain et, et bien entendu avec des déclinaisons euh, euh, sous-régionales. Diana, if you uh, very shortly answer this, I think we have so little time that we have two questions which I would like to take still. So the first is there and then there's uh, Joe Tabula here. But if you want to very shortly answer also for the question Made by. Okay, for, for Ghana, what I can say is um, the community centers for a long time were sort of abandoned in a way because it was built and not took so much inclination into the arts. For instance, the center will be very small, there's no backstage, and it's difficult for, to have a real artistic thing. But then the government there was some funding for Center for National Cultures to be built in all the regions. And it, had, it came with auditoriums. And then also, when we celebrated our Ghana at 50, spaces were now built. So what we need now is to, for instance, most of the good productions are only done in the city, Accra. And we are trying to see how we can get such performances to also tour the regions. And that needs a lot of investment because you know, carrying them, accommodating the artists and stuff like that. Now beginning to train people in the regions as to how to maintain such facilities and get the audiences to attend. Some of the buildings have been built where they, they would need to transport audiences to go. That is where we are at the moment because for some time now there's stability politically so people are beginning to appreciate concerts and shows and we are in the process of now building more audiences in the regions so when we do things in Accra we try to go to the regions okay. thank you so uh, please uh, short questions and short answers and we can take the both remaining questions please okay thank you uh, my name is Mutumuni to Mr. Ondai I think the it's just a comment the problems of uh, your country can now be easily solved. You have seen the strategy that has been used by Ghana, and that is the starting point, and it is working. Uh, but in terms of Ghana, I, I have seen here that uh, there are a number of funders. The same happened with South Africa back in 1994. But now we are, we are, we are uh, surprised because they are no longer funding uh, and uh, um, countries are telling us, and this is the truth, that we cannot assist you forever. We need to go somewhere else where assistance is necessary. So my question is, are you already building sustainability plans to say you need to have your own fund where, where, so that you are able to fund these this, uh, musicians? And the musicians that you are funding, do you enforce that they also have sustainability plans so that they, they do not find themselves uh, in 10 years' time to be like South Africans who are now sitting without funding? <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Actually, we are learning from what has happened to you. So we built the evaluation process in most of this project is very high. And um, because it's in government policy, there are government agencies that are involved together with civil society. And it's like now or never. And so we are building the basic blocks in terms of investment to, to know its worth. The intellectual policy has been a policy for intellectual property is in the making to ensure that royalties and things will be well kept. And then in terms of artistic performances and stuff and festivals. So some of these things are the basic things, the foundations that should be built. We're not trying to start from the top where we we'll hang. So we are learning from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And then finally, the last question, please. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Hege Ondai. Um, this is a comment first, and I have a question for um, Diana too. Um, in regard to what uh, uh, Ondai said about having money, I saw some faces actually being very surprised because the guy was broad enough to say, yes, we have the money. And I just want to add on that. Indeed, we have the money, but the problem is we don't know how to use it. So, <laughs> is, yeah, that is, that is the truth. We, we don't know how to use the money. And uh, instead of actually asking for money, 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 we should ask for support uh, in human resource and uh, empowerment so that we know how to use the money. Uh, my question then goes to Diana. And uh, this question is, wow, I'm surprised you managed to uh, to convince the trade minister in Ghana to even employ a research officer to know exactly how much and what the industry employs in Ghana. In my case, it is actually quite different, and I want to borrow your model if we could talk somewhere, because me, our, uh, we were tasked actually to do the research and statistics to show our contribution to the national treasury so that they can actually think about us. So I would very much want to learn from your experience how you managed to convince uh, these people because actually even uh, our Uganda Revenue Authority, uh, Uganda Revenue Authority of recent wanted to uh, introduce a certain tax. And when we approached them, I also tasked them, I asked them, are you taxing the talent or my idea or the music? Because my product, music is my product. So you are not yet protecting my product and you want the tax. But still they are not convinced. So I would very much want to learn from your experience. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, just, just like I shared, it's dialogue. So you dialogue and then make sure it is part of government policy. Once it's part of government policy, that is what the ministers are there to do. Let me give this, this let me, I need to say this. Yesterday at breakfast, guess who I bumped into? the Ghana ambassador for this area. And he is new, so he had come to see the president of Estonia to show his credentials. So quickly I cornered him. I said, look, this is a small country. They have a small population, but culture is strong here. You don't live without meeting with the cultural minister. And you don't live without making arrangements for exchange programs. I hear they have a college of culture administration. We need that in Ghana, so please get get some of these things and, and let's learn from them. They have a big music festival. Get them so that they can help us know how to organize such big successful festivals. So this, these are some of the things you have to do. You have to go to them. Uh, I mean, as people use the word lobbying. I don't want to say lobbying. Go to the minister, make appointments, talk with them. Let them know what you are saying. Convince them with examples from other countries. Give them the results. And they are human beings. They, they need results from their ministries. And they will follow you and make some noise. Um, what you saw, for instance, was the festival. We put it on the news. It was a news item. So when you do something small and it's worth it, put it in the news. And then get the papers to also write some of these things. And I believe they will listen. Thank you. Thank you. I think now it's time to slowly start closing this. Uh, when I think these two sessions we had today, I think the first one was remarkable in a way in the history of International Music Council. It's kind of opening uh, for the public, public publication of the MSDP and, and the kind of open call for everybody to join and, and come and start cooperating. And this session was so inspiring. 
and, and motivating and encouraging and giving us ideas how to go on. And, and my last words I would like to address for you as a parts and, and, and think about the cooperation. And, and when we talk about poverty reduction, it's a s small slice. It's important, but it's, it, it's only one part of the story. And for me, as a person uh, from up north Europe, I think it's, it's always it's about what, you, what I can learn from you, what you bring to my society, in the intercultural dialogue, these uh, uh, problems with uh, intolerance, racism, and things like this. I think we have really much to give and learn from each other, and I would like to thank you, both teach, uh, the speakers and you, for audience, for this fruitful and, and, and very interesting discussion. I hope you will have a nice lunchtime, and we will meet on afternoon. Thank you.